tonight on 3 News. I'm Simon Shepherd on Great Mercury Island where New Zealand's first space rocket has just left this launch rail. Is John Key warming to Copenhagen? How the Prime Minister's icy resolve is melting under global pressure. Glenn Mills, a man described as an HIV predator, is found dead in Mount Eden Prison. I have a neighbour, he hit the tree. And the emergency call tapes and crash photos are released, but Tiger Woods still won't talk to police. This is 3 News with Hilary Barry and Mike McRoberts. Kia ora, good evening and move over NASA. New Zealand's arrived in space. The Artia 1 did suffer one small stumble on the launch pad, but then came the giant leap of joy as the rocket team celebrated a successful blast off. Let's just savour the moment. In the tradition of great New Zealand explorers, New Zealand, we are go for space. Ignition. Ten, nine, eight, oxygen. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. best feeling I've had in the world. She's away, we heard the booster burn for a good 22 seconds. As long as she held together, we're space home free. Well, Simon Shepherd was on Great Mercury Island off the Coromandel to see New Zealand cross the final frontier, Simon. Yes, Hillary, after that small delay, or oh, quite a long delay on the launch pad, the only hint of Houston we have a problem is the fact that to actually prove it went into space, they have to get the rocket back. RTL-1 ready for space. A moment three years in the making and dangerous. You know, if we say get the hell out of here, I know you guys don't, but drop your bloody camera and just yeah. come with us, eh? Hey? A select group of guests was watching safely 500 metres away. Expectations high. And these guys really are our heroes on science. You know, we've got heroes in the sports fields, but these guys are, are our real heroes, I think. If you blink, you'll miss it. Yep. So hopefully... Uh, we won't miss it and hopefully things will work today, but if it's not today, it'll be tomorrow um, until they get it to fly. The rocket looked ready, but back in the bunker, a problem. And that meant the countdown was off. Uh, we can confirm we have no disconnection of the air coupler. Yeah, at this stage we'll have to scrub the launch and we're going to have another crack at things in uh, three hours. We've just taken the fuel out of the rocket. Uh, we're trying a few things with different pressures to, uh, to see what we can do. So, uh, yeah, very unfortunate, very disappointing, but we're going to keep on trucking. And they did, determined to make the rocket fly. So for the last hour or so, Peter Beck and the rocket lab technicians have been trying to find a way around the coupling problem. They may have had some success as they've just replaced the fuel tanks on the rocket. Could be time to give it another go. But not before a new valve was flown in from Fitianga. Then the six metre RTO-1 was finally ready. Two, one. A delighted designer with an ecstatic audience. A fantastic effort, Pete. That was just incredible. Uh, it was pure power. It was, it was glorious to behold, Peter. You know, I, don't, I don't know where. <laughs> that way. But the question now is, did it make it to space and take New Zealand with it? Now the Rocket Lab crew are fairly confident looking at their raw data that they did make it into space. But to confirm that they need the equipment that's in the nose cone. Where is that nose cone? Well if it made it back down from space it's probably bobbing around out there in the ocean. And to find it they've got a GPS tracker on board. At the moment they're waiting for the signal to come through from there. They've got about two days of battery life in that nose cone for, to power that signal. Apparently there's no chance of the nose cone sinking so we're still waiting for confirmation that New Zealand has made it to space. Simon, thank you.